If you have chronic fatigue syndrome or fibromyalgia, it's likely that you may have additional medical problems as well. If you've been diagnosed with either CFS or fibro, there's a better than 50-50 chance that you have both. In addition, it's likely that you have one or more additional medical problems that often occur together with CFS and FM. These are called related conditions. Having multiple medical conditions complicates things, but treating your related conditions should reduce your overall symptom level. This video deals with six of the more common related conditions and what you can do about them. The first is sleep disorders. A majority of people with CFS and FM, and perhaps as many as 80%, have a sleep disorder. The two most common are sleep apnea and restless leg syndrome. Let me write those down for you. Apnea and restless leg syndrome, often known as RLS. Apnea means the, <clears throat> excuse me, the absence of breathing. Sleep apnea occurs when a person's airway becomes blocked during sleep. He or she then wakes up, gasps for air, and falls asleep again. This can occur many times a night, leaving the person exhausted in the morning. Apnea is a treatable condition. Probably the most common current treatment is use of a CPAP machines. CPAP stands for Continuous Positive Airway Pressure. This is a machine that keeps the airway open by delivering a continuous stream of air. Restless leg syndrome involves strong, unpleasant sensations in the legs that create an urge to move. Self-management techniques include reducing caffeine, establishing a regular sleep pattern, doing exercise that, uh, exercises that involve the legs, using hot or cold baths, and taking supplements to counteract deficiencies <clears throat> excuse me, in iron, folate, and magnesium. Also, medications may help, including sedatives, affecting dopamine, pain relievers, and anticonvulsants. The second category of related conditions is food and digestive issues. One-third or more of people with CFS and FM are sensitive to foods such as grains and dairy and experience gastrointestinal symptoms in response to eating certain foods. These may include heartburn, gas, nausea, diarrhea and constipation, and also headaches, joint pain, and rashes. These symptoms may be caused by a variety of issues, including the following. One is uh, candida, which is a uh, type of yeast infection, uh, celiac disease, whoops, disease, also known as uh, gluten intolerance, and that means uh, strong allergic reactions to wheat and other grains, uh, lactose intolerance, lactose intolerance, which is uh, intolerance of dairy products, and also allergy to nightshade vegetables, which include potatoes, tomatoes, and peppers. There are two major treatments for food allergies, avoidance and limiting consumption. If foods produce strong reactions, the normal treatment is to eliminate them from the diet entirely. Often the elimination of just a few foods can improve symptoms dramatically. Alternatively, a food may be tolerated if it is eaten only occasionally. There are also other digestive conditions that are often experienced by people with CFS and fibro. And let me give you another couple of acronyms in that category. One of them is IBS, which stands for Irritable Bowel Syndrome. And the other is uh, GERD which is another name for acid reflux, and that's gastroesophageal reflux disorder. Third related condition is depression. People with CFS and fibromyalgia frequently experience depression, which can be of two types, situational and biochemical. So let me write those down for you. Situational and bio chemical. 
Situational depression, also called reactive depression, is a response to a particular set of circumstances, in this case the disruptions and uncertainties created by long-term illness. Situational depression lends itself to self-management strategies. Some people with this form are also helped by professional counseling. People with CFS and FM may also experience a second type of depression, biochemical. Prolonged stress can alter the biochemistry in the brain. Self-management strategies may also be useful for this type of depression, but treatment normally also includes medication. Fourth area of uh, related conditions is orthostatic intolerance. This is uh, uh, another common condition often experienced with uh, CFS and fibro, and it manifests itself as lightheadedness and even fainting when standing. There are two main types, which are also known by acronyms, NMH, which is uh, neurally mediated hypotension, and POTS, which is postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome. NMH is a condition in which standing up causes a sudden and dramatic drop in blood pressure, resulting in lightheadedness, nausea, and sometimes fainting. Treatments include increasing blood volume through the consumption of fluids and salt, wearing support hose, avoiding periods of standing, and using medications like Florinef. POTS is a rapid increase in heart rate when standing up, often a jump of more than 30 beats per minute. POTS is often treated using the same measures as NMH. Fifth category is multiple chemical sensitivity, or MCS. A majority of people with CFS and fibromyalgia experience allergic reactions to various substances, including mold, perfumes and other scented products, cigarette smoke, household chemicals such as soaps and detergents, car exhaust, glues, and inks. <laughs> Chemical sensitivity is the reason that most CFS and FM support groups ask people to come to meetings fragrance-free. Chemical sensitivity triggers symptoms such as headaches, dizzy dizziness, faintness, nausea, breathing difficulties, and irritation of the eyes, mouth, and throat. The severity of reactions varies greatly from mild annoyance to serious threat. Those with more severe reactions may be housebound. The most useful coping strategy is avoidance, which includes eliminating offending substances from the home and limiting exposure to them while away from home. Last, myofascial pain syndrome, or MPS. Many people with fibromyalgia experience myofascial pain syndrome, which means pain localized in certain muscles or fascia called trigger points, often in the neck or shoulders. Myofascial pain is usually treated with medication, massage, rest, heat and cold, and the injection of local anesthetic into the trigger points. The latter is often called spray and stretch because anesthetics are often accompanied by the stretching of the muscles involved. Since myofascial pain may be aggravated by stress, repetitive motion, and body mechanics, it can also be treated with lifestyle adjustments such as relaxation, the avoidance of repetitive motion, and improved body mechanics. In conclusion, multiple medical problems are the rule, not the exception for people with CFS and fibromyalgia. So if you experience symptoms that don't fit with CFS or fibro, consider the possibility that you may have something in addition to CFS or fibro. By treating other conditions, you may be able to moderate your overall symptom level. <laughs>